Hey friends, so here are the quick practices for third grade, unit three. Uh, now we're getting into um, addition subtraction as we go into unit three. So these first set of quick practices are all about revision, um, or not revision, um, rehearsing our multiplication and division. So you can have some, take some liberties here as to how you do that. Um, you can see here for lesson one, it gives you the um, equations, and then student leaders are supposed to call on individual students to get answers. Um, I still want to make this coral response and have the entire room or the entire class responding. So I would use it more maybe even as a number talk. So boys and girls, six times nine, think about it. Thumbs up when you know. Class, and I want the whole class to say 54. But I'm giving kids that I, the option of giving a thumbs up right here in your heart box, not up in the air, that puts that anxiety and pressure on students who don't know it and they feel rushed now to get the answer. Give students a minute to think about it. And I'm thinking to myself, um, or I'm saying, modeling, thinking out loud, of like, hmm, if I'm not sure, I could be counting by sixes. I might be counting by nines. And so you're kind of giving some hints as to what students would come up with. You already are seeing in the audience how many kids have automaticity. So let's just say we say class and they all say 54. And now I can say, boys and girls, um, let's talk about two ways you might solve this. And Tommy says, well, I did the fives trick. Tell us more, Tommy. Tommy says, well, I, did, I said, well, I don't know six groups of nine, but I know five groups of nine is 45 and I counted on another nine, 54. Great. Um, someone else tell us a strategy. Or I might say, boys and girls, turn and tell your neighbor Tommy's strategy. What did Tommy do? And I want them to rehearse it maybe with a partner. Um, because some of us are still stuck on doing our count buys for every one, um, which is not a bad thing. We just need to push them to the more derived strategies now. Of counting by nine six times is just not very efficient. But could I do the five shortcut? That's what I'm looking for. Um, I call on Sarah, and Sarah says, oh, I did it differently. I did six times 10 equals 60, and then I just subtracted a six. So I said that I was gonna do 10 groups of six instead of um, nine groups of six. So she used that commutative property to rearrange the problem. So she did nine times six. She's like, no, I don't like that, but I like 10 times six is 60. Now I subtracted a six. Boys and girls, turn to your neighbor and explain visually or on your whiteboard, what does she mean? She made the nine a 10 and subtracted a six. So if you do this route, remember you only have five minutes. So I would only do a few problems, but the more we do that and we even name it of like, oh, turning a nine into a 10 is Sarah's idea and using the five shortcut is Tommy's idea. I can now anchor those ideas on the whiteboard. And so as students go maybe to the next problem or the next day, we can say, remember, you might wanna use Tommy's strategy. You might wanna use Sarah's strategy. And we're sharing that there are different ways to come up with this answer. So quick practice is about fluency and creating automaticity. I think this is a great way to do that. You can go through all of them and just recall each one and then choose one or two of them to have a quick number talk about. That works too. It's really up to you. You also have the fluency slides for third grade where students can now practice their own building automaticity during that time. Uh, so you're kind of an exception to the rule here in third grade and that typically quick practice is really about choral response, everyone responding. When you get to this part in your year, you're now you're still just working on automaticity with math facts. So I would choose your route for this, but I personally think number talks builds the most amount of strategy work and then ultimately automaticity, um, which is your goal. Okay, so then as you can see, you do the same thing. You practice with twos, fives, and tens. These ones should be more automatic. So we should be thinking, I'm not gonna count by twos six times. I'm just gonna take six two times. I'm gonna double it. Six and six is 12. Right, so we're looking for automaticity on these. We get to lesson three and you can see that now we're working on our um, threes and our sevens, I think is what we have going on there. Threes, fours, and nines, okay, same idea. Then you get to lesson four um, and now we're going to be practicing with our six, sevens, and eights. We're looking for patterns that we notice. But again, it's all rehearsal. So we should be getting better at these the more we talk about it, the more we practice our count buys together, the more we can't practice that five shortcut. Um, we should help us out. You notice now you pick up the slides. Now instead on seven, uh, lessons seven to 18, you have one, two, three slides, four slides um, to do every day. So you just keep rehearsing these same slides every day. Lesson 11, you get new slides, but you get through all of these slides in that five minute period. 
Lesson 15, you notice you get a net new set of slides. So you keep that same set of slides for a chunk of lessons. So students really do start to build automaticity and fluency with that skill. Now, as you're in addition subtraction, you're going to get to some new skills. Don't worry for right now. Right now, you're doing rehearsal of multiplication division, so we don't lose it as we go into addition subtraction. I hope that helps. I'd love to see pictures or videos of you and your students doing the quick practice, so feel free to message me with those um, at shannon at empowerconsulting.org. Thanks, everyone. Have fun.